The DNC polls are garbage. Hi, thanks for watching today. I want to talk about the DNC polls. Now, this is a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time, and <laughs> there is a long list of problems with these polls. But I've decided to condense it down to just three reasons to make this a, a reasonable, uh, sh reasonably short video. Now, because this video is not anything with breaking news, typically those videos don't do as well for me. So if you appreciate this video, can you please share it with someone? And let's get this information out there. That would be awesome. But let me get to the three reasons why I believe the DNC polls are, are hot garbage, okay? Now, the first thing that you have to know about polls is most people have never taken a statistics class. They've never taken a forecasting class. This is something that most people really don't understand, and they rely on experts to tell them what it means. Now, I'm not an expert, but I do have a fancy microphone, and I have taken, I guess, eight graduate hours in statistics and forecasting, so I know a little bit about this, and I'm going to try to do my best to explain it to you. But one thing in all of these polls, it involves math. And the first thing would be a confidence level. And the base, base, base of any statistics, you want it to be at least a 95% confidence uh, value. What that means is that if you were to do this same poll again and again and again, that 95% of the time, your results would be within the margin of error. Only 95%, not 100%, just 95%. Now, the polls that I've looked at, they're all 95% confidence uh, interval. That's, that's really the lowest it could be. They could do better polls, but they're going with the, the bare minimum on this. And that brings us to margin of error. And what margin of error means is... They take the, the sample size and calculating it using, using math, using statistics, they can find out if they were to recreate this poll again and again and again, what they would expect the difference to be in the first poll and the second poll and the third poll. So let's say you're a candidate, you're polling at 1% in the poll. Well, if there's a 5% margin of error, they could run the poll again, and that candidate could be at 6%. And then they could run it again, and they could be at 4% or 2% or 0%. All of those would fall within the margin of error. And that's why it's important that the margin of error is as small as possible. Now, I just looked at two polls here. This one is from CNN, which is one of the approved pollsters. And it turns out CNN doesn't even do their own polling. They buy their polling from a company. This company is called SSRS. So why is an SSRS an approved pollster? It doesn't even make sense. CNN buys the poll from them. Okay. But I looked into the methodology for their latest poll. And it says, that, oh, a total of 1,003 adults were interviewed by telephone. You think, 1,000, that's, that's a pretty good number. It's an okay number. But once we get into, into the details of it, they only had uh, 400, let's see, 424 Democrats or Democratic-leaning people. Democratic-leaning independents. That's, that's a problem. One... There's no distinction between Democrats and independents in this survey. That's important because this poll is about the Democratic primary. We want to know how these candidates are doing with Democrats. And I understand that in some states, independents can vote in, in a primary. But like for me, I'm in Oregon. You have to be registered as a Democrat to vote in the Democratic primary. Independent voters, doesn't matter how they feel, 
unless they register as a Democrat, they can't vote in the primary. This this, uh, survey here doesn't even distinguish between Democrats and Democratic-leaning independents. There's a problem with that. But the main problem is the survey size, the sample size. 424 Democrats and Democratic-leaning independents? That's not enough. When we look at it here, the margin of error is plus or minus 5.8%. Now, the purpose of these polls in regards to the debates is to find out if candidates are doing well, uh, these candidates that are polling very low. So when you have a candidate polling at 2%, And like, for example, this upcoming debate, they want uh, the candidate to have four polls where they got at least 3%, okay? The margin of error is double what they need in this. So it would be perfectly mathematically correct that a candidate that was polling at 5%, that they could have a poll where they polled at 2%. And that would be totally fine. That would make sense. And that would be fine, according to this poll. And when I mean fine, what I mean is that wouldn't be invalid. That would be a valid poll, even though they said the candidate was at 2%, when in all actuality, they were at 5% or 6%. That's a problem, especially since they're not doing that many polls. So when I see a poll and it has a a margin of error of 5.8%, that's way too much. Well, is there anything that the pollsters could do to have a lower margin of error? Yeah, it's real simple. You need a larger sample size. In fact, instead of 424, if they would take their sample up to 2,000, you can get that margin of error down to 2% or less that would be much more accurate, and we would really know how these candidates are doing. But with such a large error rate, we don't know how they're doing. We don't know how they're doing at all. So that's the first problem that I have with these polls. Now, the second problem that I have with these polls are the questions that they're asking the people. So the question, according to Monmouth, which is a DNC-approved poll, If the Democratic primary election for president was today, and it should be were today, it's not even grammatically correct, so there's a a problem there. But if the Democratic primary election for president was today, would you vote for, and then they would list the names, and then you would choose who you would vote for. The problem with this is that the Democratic primary is not today. It's next year. And by phrasing it that way, you're going to get a totally different result, especially for candidates that are polling really low. You see, most people, when they're deciding who they're going to vote for on election day, they will choose between someone that they think can win. So they will choose one of the top candidates. And by phrasing it this way, to get the person to think about it being election day, that gets the interviewee thinking about the election day and who the top candidates are because most people will not vote for a candidate that isn't going to win. And that's the opposite of what these polls are supposed to do. These polls are supposed to help us determine support for candidates that are polling really low to find out if they have enough support that they should be on the debate stage. But that's not the question they're asking. They should ask. You know, a better question would be, so, who are you supporting for president? It's that simple. Let them, let them, let them tell you who they're supporting. Because that's who they're supporting today, okay? And that's what the poll should be looking at is who are people supporting today, not who people might vote for, you know, next year. Now, you may not 
see that the same way I do. I see this as a big deal. And I think that asking this question in this way is deliberate. And it is deliberate to keep down the candidates with a lower amount of support. This is what the DNC does. Their establishment, they want their candidates on top, and they will do whatever it takes to put their finger on the scale and keep insurgent candidates down. And the phrasing of if the election were today, that's exactly what that is. It is a psychological trick. And that brings me to the third problem that I have with the DNC polls, and that is it is not transparent at all. Now, what I mean by this is that none of these pollsters have said when the polls are going to come out. They just randomly come out. There's Nobody knows when, when they uh, come out. Now, if you don't know, the DNC has an approved polling list. I'll put that on the screen. And these, this is who they've chosen to do their polls. But these pollsters don't ever have to explain to anyone when they publish. And we don't even know if every poll that they've done has been published. It's possible that they did a poll, and for whatever reason, maybe it, they didn't have the results that they were hoping for, and they decided not to publish that poll. That's a problem. Now, that could easily be solved if these polling companies would announce when they were going to publish polls. Or if, you know, the DNC put out a statement that, like, we expect all of these approved polling companies to put out one poll a month or one poll every six weeks or one poll between each debate or something like that. But there's been no transparency about that at all. In fact, it reminds me of leading up to the third debate and people were wondering if certain candidates were going to make the debate or not. And every day I would check to see if there was a new poll. And it's like they all stopped publishing polls for a while. With no explanation. Now, when an organization such as the DNC, which has a history of shady behavior, does not share with the public or even the candidates when polls are going to be published, that really look shady. That is keeping everyone in the dark. That's the opposite of what a democracy should be. So, yeah, shame shame on the DNC for the way that they have set this up because it's not transparent at all and any candidate or person that says otherwise is really bad at math or they're lying. So to conclude, three reasons why these polls are garbage. One, Margin of error, way too high. It could be fixed easily, but they don't do it. Two, the question that they ask is not the right question at all. It could be fixed, but they don't do it. And three, there should be some transparency and some announcement of when the polls are going to come out. But by keeping that information private, it's just really bad. It's a really bad look for the DNC. Now, there are many other reasons why these polls are nonsense, but this video is long enough. If you learned something, if you like this video, please share it with someone and let me know your comments below. Peace.